This video is going to be covering a couple of things. We'll be taking a look at the Mystic Internet Server, which is a key piece of software that you run in order to serve up your bulletin board to incoming Telnet connections, as well as a number of other sorts of connections you can use with your Mystic system. But we're also going to have a quick look at uh, the Nodeless browser that I demonstrated before when we were taking a look at the nightly routines because I want to show you how you can use this Nodeless browser not just to uh, look up names like we did before or even if you say show me who address 211 slash or oh, I don't know 102 is and it comes up as Todd from era 404 BBS but remember we were writing netmail in an earlier video and when you're sending a netmail that's a, to a specific address and the Nodeless browser can be very helpful for finding the address that you need so if I address any a netmail and I'll write it to myself so I'm going to send it to Paul Hayton and you'll see straight away it's giving me the option of um, putting in the netmail address or if I wanted to this is where I could type the word Hayton and look up using the Nodeless browser which one I want and in this case I'm going to send it to 211101 which is the uh, agency BBS that's where I reside and then it's coming up with all the details now because it's got those information in the Nodeless browser and uh, then I can confirm yes I want to send it the subject is hello and this is my test net mail to you by or forward slash and then s the command is s to save so that's just a quick um, snapshot of how you can use that Nodeless browser once you've actually got the uh, Nodeless compiled. It's really useful when you're sending netmails to people. So let's move on. Now we're going to take a look today at the Mystic Internet Server. And the configuration for the server is in uh, the Mystic Config side of things and under the Servers menu. And you'll see that there are um, six different servers, a Telnet server, FTP, POP3, SMTP, uh, NNTP and BINKP. And there are some general server options as well. Now in the server options screen if you have a domain name you can set that there and if you have an IP address that relates to the um, interface, so the network card on your computer that is running Mystic, you can set that there. Mystic has the ability to enable IP blocking, which means that um, if you want to, you can set particular IP addresses that it will never allow a connection from. It can also log them. Um, now, the way that the IP blocking works is apart from you putting in a, a particular list into a text file called badip.txt, and it sits in the data directory, you can also let Mystic go ahead and just do its thing by automatically banning uh, based on so many connections in so many seconds. And what you'll find, and it's quite normal, is that Mystic will end up encountering a lot of particularly Telnet connections from uh, mischievous people on the internet that are just probing people's computers and ports for open connections. This auto IP ban is really good because it ultimately locks them out within the space of 120 seconds and they don't get very far anyway. So my advice to you is to um, leave the IP blocking and logging on. You may want to play with the auto IP ban settings. Um, the other settings here, um, this also will look at uh, DNS addresses if you want to turn this on for blacklist blocking and this will also perform um, blocking by country and uh, if you say want to block everything from oh I don't know I don't want to name a particular country for fear of ticking somebody off but just choose a country and say you don't want that traffic there is a text file in the data directory called country I think it is let's have a look uh, we'll go into mystic data and bad country there it is and under bad country you'll see a very a uh, simple file with a bunch of options there. Now uh, the first line where it says A, if you make that a B, say on this entry here, then Afghanistan would not be able to connect to your system. And so it goes. Just make sure that you don't mess with a layer of this file if you do edit it. 
but it's uh, quite an effective tool if you just wanted to do a blanket block for a particular area or areas. So that's um, pretty much the settings in there. Now the other servers, um, we're going to focus on the Telnet server because that is really the main way that people can connect to your bulletin board using the Telnet client and uh, that's normally set to yes. The default number of nodes or connections is set to 3 and the default server port which is the default Telnet port is 23. You can change those if you want or you can just go with the stock settings. Whatever port you do choose, make sure you open it on your firewall and on your router. Uh, the dupe IP limit set to 1, so the maximum number of connections from the same IP. Start hidden, I just say no. So there's not much in there, but those are the settings that you can use to set up Telnet. Mystic also has the ability to run an FTP server, and you can either turn that on or off. And my suggestion for you starting up a new system is to switch that off. In fact, the only servers I suggest you use to start with are the Telnet server and the Bink P server. Um, it's just a case of getting your head around those ones first and then you can work your way up. But with FTP, uh, again, you can set the server port and the standard sort of FTP settings. And this will allow you to um, connect via an FTP client to download files from the file base and potentially some message packets in a QWK format, which we haven't explored yet. I'm setting that to no. POP3 and SMTP, as you probably know, are to do with uh, mail. And don't be fooled, this is not full on email as you know it. This is a way of allowing your, your email client to connect with Mystic so that it can check uh, what Mystic refers to as email. But in the case of Mystic, email is just internal messages that are posted between people on that bulletin board. The messages go no further than the bulletin board. They're not sent out as echo mail or net mail. It's purely a, um, an internal message based system. So I'm going to turn those off for now because I don't want to use them. NNTP, uh, for those of you who are not familiar with it, that's Network News Transport Protocol. That's the Usenet news protocol, and the default server port for that is 119. So you can uh, serve up using a news reader Mystic's message bases and um, access them and post to them through a news client if you want. Likewise, I'm going to set that to no. And then the last one is the Bink P server, and this is a key piece of technology because this allows you to send and receive echo mail and net mail. Um, across the internet to other systems. Now we know that Fidopol is really the tool for sending stuff using Mystic, but Bink P server that's built into Mystic, and I'm going to turn this on, is the tool that is really on receive, waiting for those connections from other systems, whether it be a Fidopol from another Mystic system or another bit of bulletin board software. Now the settings are pretty much good to go. The default server port is 24554 and you should again open that up on your firewall and also on your router. The maximum number of connections and timeout I would set as they are. Force cram 5 MD or cram dash MD5. I would say leave that as no. Uh, what you can do is individual echo nodes. Remember we configured in echo mail nodes under the FSX hub and in session options we had the choice of enforcing it there. So that's where you can say if you're going to send passwords encrypt them so that they're not plain text. Set the, that particular setting on an echo node or echo mail node basis. Don't um, set a blanket setting here otherwise you can come a cropper. Allow unsecure settings, I would set that to yes, so that systems that you don't know can at least connect to you and perhaps pass netmail to you. And file conflicts, if they do send you files and they send the same file twice, you want Mystic to rename the second file so that you get both, but at least it's got a slightly different name. So those are my suggestions for you there. So let's exit out of there and fire up the Mystic Internet server and have a look at what it looks like. Now, um, there's not much on the screen other than the fact that you can press a couple of keys and down the bottom here you'll see tab to switch 
and escape to shut down. So if I press escape, I've got the option of yes, no to, to shut it down, I'll say no. And the other thing I can do is I can press the tab key and up the top here you'll see that it's highlighted the word Telnet, so it's showing me at the moment the Telnet server is running, three connections waiting, it's operating on port 23. If I press the tab key, it's going to jump to the next available server that's running, which will be the Bink P server. And here you can see that it's got six connections waiting um, for um, input, and it's listing on port 24554. And lastly, you'll see that there's the um, event system, which we haven't touched on yet, but this is really probably the most important part of the video, because it's this event system that um, you can use to keep a watching eye on your Mystic setup and to uh, ask it to do certain things as uh, stuff happens, such as another bulletin board connects to your Mystic system through the Bink P server and mail arrives. You can set an event up in Mystic so that the moment that happens, Mystic recognizes this and then runs Mutil mail in. Likewise, you can set this up so that the moment somebody posts a message on your bulletin board, Mystic recognizes that and runs Mutil mail out. Also, you can set it up so that it's going to um, run an overnight routine for you. In fact, let's just do that, shall we? So I'll shut this down and we'll go into Mystic config which I'll bring up on the screen. And the event system is in editors down the bottom there, event editor. Now the default settings are, are not helpful at the moment insofar as they, they don't completely point to what we've set up in these, these videos. But I am going to remove a few of these because, um, well actually no, I probably won't. I'll just leave them as they are. But normally I take a few out, anything I'm not using I remove so that it doesn't confuse me further. Makes sense. So there are a number of event types in the event editor and the two that I want to talk about today are semaphores. So a semaphore if you remember from uh, your naval days are when the flags used to be waved between ships and they would convey a meaning. Now if I'm uh, logged in in my Mystic bulletin board and I have uh, posted netmail, as I actually did before, you'll find that in the Mystic directory there is a subdirectory called Semaphore. And what happened when I posted that netmail was it created this text file, netmail.out. Now it's, an imp it's a zero kilobyte file, but it's simply there as a placeholder to let Mystic know that there's something that's ready to go in the way of netmail cut back to the configuration screen and enter on this uh, event listing and you can start to see what's going on. Let's activate it. So it's an active event and this is going to be sending outbound, outbound uh, echo oops, slash netmail it's a semaphore type event, I'm not going to change that. It can run at any hour, at any minute. And when it does, I have to press enter on this because the default en um, entries are incorrect. But what it's going to do is it's going to run mutil and it's going to go mail out dot ini. And then I use a pipe which means and. And then I run fido Poll space send, which means send anything out that needs to happen. And then I run another pipe that means and. And then after it's connected and done its polling, there might be some stuff to pull in. So I'll run mutil space mail in dot ini and press enter. And you can see that it's looking for the semaphores echo mail out, or there's the other one that we saw, net mail out. I'm not going to worry about any particular settings here for node or warning, but what I am going to do is switch this on so that it runs on every day of the week. And press escape once and you can see that that's set up to go. Now on the opposite side of the coin, let's pretend that we're receiving um, something through the Bink P server. We want to turn this one on and we want to toss 
um, incoming echo slash netmail. It's a semaphore event. Again, I'm not going to change anything other than the shell line, which will now be mutil mail in dot any, because that's the any file I want. So it's looking for an echo mail in or a net mail in semaphore, and I want that to run on every day um, as well. And the last one I'm going to set up is for this video a maintenance setting. So this is defaulted to weekly maintenance, but let's make this nightly IGHTLY maint. It's a shell event, and I want that to run at uh, say four o'clock in the morning, and it's going to run mutil maint dot any, and it's going to do it on every day of the week as well. Right, so now we've got a system that's running nightly maintenance for us and keeping an eye on incoming and outgoing echo mail and net mail. And I think I will do one more thing, and that's to activate a hourly poll just to be sure that I'm getting stuff from the FSXNet hub. So this is an hourly poll and I want to run it um, the hour figure doesn't count, but I'll do it at say five minutes past the hour. And the command line there would be Fido poll, and then you specify the hub address 211100, and then run mutil space mail in dot i and i. And we want to make sure that that's running all the time as well. So I've left a few alone, but you can see how quickly you can build up some pretty powerful stuff. And if I escape out of all of this, and I'll just get rid of the uh, the log inside of things as well. Let's just rerun Mystic Mutil. And if I go across to the event um, side of things, you can see that um, actually it's found a, a semaphore already where it was uh, discovered echo mail in, so it ran mutil mail in. You can see that it's going to poll the FSXNet hub in six minutes from now. The nightly maintenance is about six hours away at the time of recording this video and it's busy waiting for um, the ability to detect any incoming uh, net mail. So I'll just call up the Bink P server and I'm actually going to force the hub because I can do that to poll this bulletin board that we're playing with. So I'm just putting in Fido poll and putting in the hub's address. Now I'm not sure if there's any echo mail or net mail waiting for it, but let's just see. And you'll see very quickly in the status side of the screen that things are going to update here. Boom, done. So you can see and there was nothing sent or received this time round. But um, if I was to say just run a command line and run Fido poll. Uh, 21100. I just wonder if there's anything there. And before I do that, I'm just going to bring up the semaphore directory so we can keep an eye on things and we can see what Mystic is doing. Nuts, there was nothing there. I wish there was, because if there had been, you would have seen a semaphore created that said uh, echo mail in or net mail in, and then within 60 seconds, this event system here would have uh, processed it and pulled it into the system. Anyway, that's probably enough for now, but I think that gives you a good overview of the server and also importantly, the way the event system can really be your friend. Thank you for watching and as always, if you uh, like what you see, please like the video or subscribe to the channel. Bye for now.